Hello fellow readers and readresses, 2022 is at this point long gone, so I thought it was past time for us to look at my reading stats for 2022 and my reading goals for 2023. As always, this lighting is terrible, but I'm sure you don't come here for the quality of my cinematography. I'm hoping this video is not going to be too long, we're just going to go through the numbers of 2022 very quickly, see how things went, and then go through again very quickly my goals for 2023, what I would like to achieve in terms of reading during this year. I have my trusty computer over here and I'm going to be reading from it, which means I'm putting my glasses on and glaring you out of existence, but it is what it is. So without further ado, Let's go through the numbers of 2022 and see how I did. The total numbers of books I read in 2022 is 102, which is I think the most books I've read in a year in my entire life so far. Great achievement. The total number of pages I read in 2022 is 37,751, which again I believe is the most pages I've read in a year. My average number of books per month was 8.5 and my average pages per month were 3,146. Not bad, I would say. Now, my best reading month of the year was December with 13 books and 6,266 pages, which is double my average at this point. And my worst reading month was November with four books and 1,515 pages read, with May not far behind. Now, if we look at my average rating for the year, it was 4.3, which is very, very high, but that's not surprising because in 2022, I had focused on reading books that I've been wanting to read in a very long time and books that I thought I'm really gonna like. I have kind of grown out of my desire to hate read some books. A few years back, I had this thing where with the friends of mine, we would pick books that we didn't think we were necessarily gonna like. First, to challenge ourselves to read things that we necessarily wouldn't in a normal setting, but also to kind of hate on them together, which is a great thing always when you read a book you don't like. Now, during this year, I honestly, I have no patience for books I'm not gonna like. So this is the first year in my life that I have DNF'd a book, few actually, and I am very happy with that fact because I don't wanna waste time. You know, this is the first year in my life where I sat down and thought, oh my God, my life isn't endless and I'm not gonna be able to read all the books that I want in my lifetime. So I really need to be intentional with my time. Hence, now I have these high ratings which I'm very happy about, predominantly, like the vast majority being four stars and uh, quite a few five stars as well. Now, my favorite book of 2022 that was new to me was a three-way split between Malice by John Gwynn, Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie, and Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hopp. All three of these are high fantasy books. I read them for the first time this year after meaning to read them for a few years at least, and I adored them. I couldn't possibly pick one that I love the most. Each of them has its qualities. I would say that this one is the most epic in terms of feeling, the one that gets you the most catharsis of all of them. Uh, this one is the one that has probably the best character work out there, although again, the other two also have great characters. I don't think I'm capable of liking a book that doesn't have great character work. So all three of these have amazing, amazing character work, but Jaw Abercrombie especially is really, really good at developing these very, very flawed characters that you're gonna fall in love with. And in Robin Hobb, I had the most emotion invested, but still, characters were amazing. It had these very unconventional plot lines and a somewhat classic fantasy. I absolutely adored it and I recommend every single one of these three books so, so highly. Couldn't pick my favorite one, but I think these made my year so much better. And then in terms of my favorite books that I reread this year, it's a two-way split this time between The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, surprising absolutely nobody who has watched at least one video on this channel, and A Game of Thrones by George R. Martin. Yeah, that's the right one, right? <laughs> yes, that's the right one. I reread these this year and I had the best time. I think I appreciate them even more than I did the first time, if that is even possible. Couldn't say enough good things about these book and I, books and I don't think you need me to because everybody knows about these books. The hype is real and the hype is well deserved for both of these books. And then in terms of my least favorite, most disappointing book of the year, I would say 
Without a doubt, that is gonna be Iron Widow by Shiran J. Zhao. I really wanted to like this book. The author is here on YouTube and I wanted to give the book a try, mostly because I got it in a, an Illumicrate box and I did this uh, experiment where I read all the books uh, that I've gotten at that point from Illumicrate. You can watch the video, I'll link it over here. I'm not gonna stop much about why this book disappointed me so much. I'm just gonna say that the main character was absolutely detestable and why it was so bad was because the author had definitely tried to make us like the character so much to the point where they gave her absolutely no humanity. That's not the only thing I hated about this book, but I definitely, definitely disliked it very, very much. And if I one day do it on whole, this is probably the first book that's gonna go. Now, in terms of genre that I read this year, I'm sure I'm gonna surprise nobody again who has watched at least one video on this channel. Fantasy was absolutely dominating with 59.6% of the books that I read being fantasy, that is 53 of the books, followed not very shortly by classics with 13.5%, which is 12 books. And then we have mystery slash thriller being the third one with seven books, graphic novels with two, historical fiction with two. Oh, and then we have manga. I guess I'm not doing these in order. Manga with five, nonfiction with two, romance with three. Mind you, one of these is a romantic suspense, so it's kind of like thrillery, but still, you know, great representation this year. And then three sci-fi books. I am surprised that the level of sci-fi is so low. I would have expected it to be higher, but Generally, when I'm in sci-fi mood, I'm also in fantasy mode, and fantasy always wins over sci-fi, but I will try to read more sci-fi during this year. We'll talk about it. And then when we look at the books that I read per category, we have adult winning very significantly with 62.9%, uh, young adult following with 31.5%, and middle grade with 5.6%. That is also not very surprising. I have outgrown young adult in a lot of ways. It's not that these books aren't worthy to be read, but I just don't enjoy them as much and I don't want to low rate books that don't deserve it just because I no longer appreciate them. Now, if we look at the series that I started this year, we will see that I have started 38 series. I started 38 series and I only finished eight. Mind you, those include the series that I've DNF'd. So not a great success when it comes to series, but this will reflect in my goals for 2023. And then the total of books that I bought for 2022 is 225. Now that's a big number and I'm not ashamed of it. I used to be very ashamed and I thought it was materialistic to be trying to buy so many books. But the truth is that the authors are writing these books in order to make money out of them. And so buying a book means you're supporting the author. Now that doesn't mean that you need to buy books if you can't afford them, but the truth is I could afford them in 2022 and I'm very happy that I was able to support so many authors, the majority of which I very, very much enjoy. Now let's look, how did I do with my reading goals for 2022? Now I said these rather arbitrarily and I didn't announce them in the beginning of the year because I didn't have a channel in the beginning of 2022, but I was trying to stick to them and I made them known kind of in the beginning of December. Uh, I will link the video if you'd like to watch it. By the way, everything I mentioned that I'm going to link is going to be in the description of the video because I can only link limited things in uh, the corner over here. My first reading goal for 2022 was to read 100 books. I had said this as my reading challenge in Goodreads and I achieved it. I read 102 books. This is a great success to me, especially because in December I had to read 11 books to be able to achieve this goal and I read two more than the actual number necessary while still working and having to deal with other life things. So I am very, very happy with this achievement. Mind you, in the beginning of 2022, I had set 40 books as my reading goal because that was my goal for 2021 and I barely managed to achieve it. So I was like, if I can repeat this thing, that would be great. And then I expanded it to 60 books and then I expand or 70, I don't remember exactly. And then I expanded it to 100 once I managed to achieve these. So Again, great, great success. Now, my second reading goal for 2022 was to read 10 specific books that I had outlined, I believe, in September in a video called Books I Want to Read Before the End of the Year. I will link it as well, where I mention again these 10 books that I wanted to read. And spoiler alert, I was not able to 100% achieve this goal. Let's go through the books one by one. The first book was Valor, which is the second book in the Faithful and the Fallen series after Malice. I was not able to read this one because it was tied in the body read with a friend of mine and because it didn't align with her schedule, we couldn't get to it. 
Mind you, this reason is gonna apply to all of the books I wasn't able to read from this list, which makes me very happy because if left to my own devices, I stick to my goals, apparently. Now, the second book was Royal Assassin by Robin Hopp. This is the second book in the Realm of the Elder Link and the second book in the Farseer trilogy. I was not able to read this book for the same reason. The third one was The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Eilington. I was able to read this book. I quite enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the series. And then we have Jade City by Fonda Lee. Same thing, I was able to read it very happy with it. Next we have The Black Tongue Thief. I was able to read this one with a friend of mine, quite enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the author continuing the series so that I can continue reading it. Theft of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan, the first book in the Rayuria Revelation series. I was able to read it and not just that, but the rest of this trilogy I was able to complete, enjoyed it very, very much. The last book in the series made my favorite books of the year. If you'd like to watch them, I will link the video. Next we have Full Metal Alchemist volumes 3, 4 and 5. I was able to complete these. I even bought numbers 6 and 7 in the series and I'm looking forward to reading those. Full Moon by Jim Butcher. This is the second book in the Dresden Files series. I wasn't able to read it. Tied in a buddy read. The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan. The fourth book in the Wheel of Time series. I wasn't able to read it because of a buddy read again. And the last book on the list is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. The first book in the Kingkiller Chronicles. I was able to read it in December. Loved it. Made my favorite books of the year. So we have six books out of ten that I was able to complete. So 60% is a great achievement to me. Especially given that I kind of decided on this goal past half of the year. So I think we did quite well. And these are all the numbers I have in terms of stats for 2022. Now let's look at the reading goals for 2023. I have these written down in a document as well, so I will be looking at it. My first goal of 2023 is to read 60 books. This is my reading challenge in Goodreads and I decided to stick to lower amount of books because reading 100 books is not a small feat. Maybe it is for some people and I have so much respect for people who can read this amount of books consistently and even more. However, I am not sure I can adhere to this sort of goal consistently because of work, because of life, because of my personality. I'm not a very consistent person when it comes to things. I am a mood reader. I can't read on a schedule most of the time. So I decided to not torture myself with goals that I might not be able to achieve if the year goes well and I am able to achieve this goal before the end of the year, I might be able to increase it later on, but I decided to start with something that I believe is more achievable. Goal number two for 2023 is that I would like 90% of my read books to be from my own TBR. I currently own over 400 books and I have only read about 30% of them, which is a shame because I don't think I'm going to stop buying books and that means that my own TBR is just going to grow for no reason without me being able to catch up. So I decided that instead of reading this many ebooks, I will try to stick to more physically owned books by me. My goal number three for 2023 is to end the year with no more than 20 started series. That means that out of my current 50 open series, yes, I do have currently 50 series that I have started, I have to make a choice and either DNF a big chunk of them or make sure that I read exclusively through the series that I've started for a big chunk of the time. We'll see how that goes, hard decisions need to be made, but I'm a completionist and I don't like it when I have so many things started going nowhere. My goal number four for 2023 is to start adding a monthly TBR to my monthly wrap-ups. Now, I am a very big mood reader, I mentioned it already, and it's very difficult for me to stick to a predetermined list of books that I have to read. It's claustrophobic and it makes me not want to read. But in order for me to be able to achieve my reading goals, the other reading goals that you will see later on, I would need to actually have some sort of discipline and not leave everything for the last minute. So I would like to disperse some of these books that I will mention later on that I would like to read during this year in a more timely manner, which will require some sort of TBR. That means I will be adding two, three books, maybe a little bit more to every single monthly wrap up for the next month, just to make sure again that I will be able to stick to my reading goals and to be able to facilitate my next reading goal. 
which is to join some reading challenges and readathons in 2023. I am a big lurker when it comes to online spaces. I like to watch and enjoy from a distance, but I rarely participate either with comments or with, well, participation myself, mostly because I don't have enough time for a lot of those things usually, and because I'm a little bit shy when it comes to talking to strangers, standing in front of this camera notwithstanding. But I thought about it and I find, again, these games very, very fun, and I would like to take participation in them. I think it would be lovely, I think it would be fun. If I don't enjoy it, I will not do it, but I think it will be a good thing. And so I have two in mind to start the year. The first one being by Book Roast. She does this magical readathon called Aurelium that happens twice a year, I believe in April and September, if I'm not mistaken. And she added recently a year long adventure called Adventure in Eldia, where every single month you have to make a choice and move through this lovely map that she sent. It's a printable. I will link the video where she announces it over here. But uh, basically, every single month you make a choice, you move through the map, it gives you a prompt, you have to read a book. It's basically adding one book to your TBR monthly, which is very doable. It's lovely. I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm also thinking to participate in Aurelium, the actual Aurelium uh, that happens twice a year. For the first time this year, I am starting to build my character and I'm very excited about it. We'll see how long I can stick to it, but I think G from Book Roast has lovely imagination and is employing it in the most beautiful way in creating these spaces and these adventures for readers. So if you haven't participated in those, I think you should give it a try. And then the second one is by Books and Lala. She does this buzzword reading challenge every year, and I am thinking of participating in the 2023 one. This is a printable. Again, I will link the video that announces this in the video description where you can download the printable, but basically every single month of 2023, you get either a word or a combination of words or a theme that you have to stick to. If it's a specific word that she gives you, you have to find the book with that word in the title. If it's a theme, you have to read a book related to that specific theme. Again, it's just adding a book to your TBR monthly, and I think it's a very, very fun thing to participate with the rest of the community. Goal number six, I believe, for 2023 is to reread two series, two of my favorite series ever. The first one being A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. I have already reread A Game of Thrones, as I mentioned earlier in 2022, and I had the best time. I didn't initially intend on rereading it, but I just felt like picking it up. And as soon as I did, I got this feeling that I wanted to reread the entire series, and I'm going to during the year 2023, if everything goes to plan. And the second series I want to reread in 2023 is The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. I have reread The Way of Kings last year, and I would like to reread Words of Radiance and Oathbringer so that I can pick up Rhythm of War, which I have purchased as soon as it came out and still haven't read yet. Now, these are both big series with gigantic books, but I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to reread them because every time I pick these books, I eat them up within a few days and I'm having the best time every time. And the last goal I have for 2023 as of right now is to start reading Malazan Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson. The first book being Gardens of the Moon, which I do own it's here somewhere on my shelves. I wanted to read this series for a few years now, but I have been scared off by the community saying that you have to pay so much attention and you will be so confused in the beginning. And maybe I will be. There's a big likelihood I will be, but I would like to give it a try because I know that it's very, very worth it. And actually, fun fact, I bought Gardens of the Moon several years ago without even knowing what it was related. I just liked the title and I liked the cover of the book. And so I purchased it on Amazon. And only after that, I found out that it was part of this series that everybody is so hyped about. So I'm very much looking forward to it and I'm putting it on my reading goals even if I don't tackle it. I would like to put the intention out there to actually do it and do it seriously. And that will do it for my stats for 2022 and my goals for 2023. I hope you enjoyed it. I am very curious to know what your reading goals are and how you did in 2022. Let me know in the comments down below and if you'd like to see my favorite books of 2022, check out this video. Bye! Thank you.